So with this week in Rails, we got a lot of bug fixes, improvements around the enums, as well as Rails API only applications. We also got some great testing benefits around emails. So let's dive right into what we got with this week in Rails. So the first item is the improved failure safety for Redis cache store delete multi. And this is a situation where you were calling the Rails cache delete multi. So you're deleting multiple keys on the cache server. And if the Redis cache server is down, then that's actually going to cause an error. So with this fix, we won't get those exceptions raised and things would be handled a bit more gracefully. The next one is the drop enum is always reversible. And this one's pretty interesting because recently we did get the PostgreSQL native enums. And with that, we were able to add the enums. So you create a data type enum that can be used by the Rails application. But then for each enum that you want to use, you have to create a migration to add those enums into the database. Whereas before in Rails, we would just have a hash or something similar where we would create our enums and that would refer back to an integer column on the database or something similar. And if we wanted to delete an enum on our database where we had the data type as an integer, we would simply just remove that key from our hash and then update all the records that were using that enum. But with the enum data type, we needed a way that we could then reverse back any enums that were added. And so with this bug fix, if we had the if exists true option set, then it was not reversible. And the next item with fix e tags with flash, when there is no flash middleware available, this is commonly found in situations where you have a Rails only API application. And so this will overall make our API only Rails applications a bit more stable. And then we have the improvements. And this one's really interesting because I did not even know that this was a test helper that we had to ensure that mailers were being generated. So this one's really cool. And I'm really excited for this one because I'm going to start using this in my applications in areas I'm sending out emails. But with this PR, the assert enqueued email with did not support testing mailers enqueued with both parameters and arguments. And so if in your application, you're doing something like a user mailer with the user passing that in and then calling the mailer deliver invoice, passing in the invoice, the assert enqueued email with mailer wasn't able to test those with both the params and the arguments. But now you can call the assert enqueued email with your mailer, the email that you want to send and pass in the params as well as the arguments. And this one I'm extremely excited about because I did do test emails a long time ago. This was maybe around 2012 where I had a Rails engine application and the parent application had many different engines in there. So I created all these different engines that were separate modules of large functionality sets. And each one of these had email notifications that they would send out but from the parent application, I wasn't able to call those mailer previews. So with this PR, we're now able to preview emails that were generated or being generated from our engines. And lastly, we got the log redirects from router simply to controller redirects. And this one's pretty interesting because I've seen this situation a few times where let's say we have these routes set up. We have a move that goes to the welcome index we then have a redirect to a controller, regular controller, and the redirect action, and then to the root path, we're redirecting to move. In our application, when we go to our root path, that then gets redirected to the move. So we have the start and get move, but it's not clear here that this request came from the redirect. So instead, what's going to happen when we get the root path, we see that we are redirected and then to the move endpoint. And then what appears to be a second request, we then get the get move. And so this is pretty cool. And I'm a big support of these kind of improvements because as we are debugging an application, it's very difficult to see some of the different things that's going on and trying to figure out what actually happened when a user reports a bug. And we're going back into the logs to try to figure out what actually happened. So this will give us a bit more insight in these particular situations where you have a redirect. 
And so that's all for this week in Rails. And I really appreciate all the work that people have done to make Rails a better framework. And so one thing I'm going to start doing at the end of these videos to give a shout out to all the different contributors that has helped make Rails better. And so some of these names are familiar, but to the ones that I don't recognize or to the ones that are first committers, I really want to thank you for your contributions to the Rails framework. It is by far my most favorite framework, and I really appreciate all the work that you have done. Well, that's all for this week in Rails. Thanks for watching.